Welcome to the Sensational Sentences webinar recording. This topic will be useful for ACAP, NCPS, HSA and ATIC students. This is a recording of the material we cover in the live webinar of this topic. You may want to just watch the video straight through or use the pause button to stop and do the activities. The webinar slides are available at this link. In this webinar, we'll look at how to join sentences together using the correct punctuation, how to use linking words, and how to identify two common sentence structure errors that often appear in students' writing. Let's first take a look at simple sentences. A simple sentence is usually made up with the subject, in this case the counsellor, and a verb, in this case was, plus other information. A simple sentence like this is obviously very clear and easy to understand. These types of sentences are also good when you want to make an important point strongly and it's easier to get the grammar correct. However, simple sentences cannot express complex ideas or show relationship between ideas. Texts with lots of simple sentences together give a choppy stop-start style of writing that is not easy to read. Take a look at the next couple of examples of simple sentences joined together. Can you identify the two simple sentences in each example? In the first example, we have the counsellor was quiet, joined with the client spoke, linked together with and. In the second example, we have the counsellor was quiet, joined with the client was speaking, linked together with because. The benefits of these sentences are that we can see how the different ideas relate to each other. This is necessary for academic writing. Of course, the grammar and punctuation is a little more tricky and sometimes if the sentences are too complex, it can confuse the reader. We call the first example of joined sentences compound sentences. And the main thing to remember is that each of the two simple sentences should be able to stand on their own as a complete sentence. There's a group of words you can use to make compound sentences, all of which you'll be very familiar with. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. One way to remember this list is to think of the word fanboys. You do need a comma before you use one of these words. The only exception is with and. The comma is often left out when and is used, but I would recommend using a comma when the sentence is quite long. Let's now take a look at some example compound sentences using these linking words. In this example, we have two simple sentences. The counsellor was empathetic, the client was not pleased. You can join these sentences together with but. The counsellor was empathetic, but the client was not pleased. Or you could use yet. The counsellor was empathetic, yet the client was not pleased. As you can see, in both of these cases, the linking words used marks a contrast. Also note the comma in the sentence before the linking word. Keep in mind that you can't just use any fanboy linking word to join simple sentences. The linking word has to show the correct relationship between the information. Take a look at the example on the slide and work out which one doesn't make sense. You may want to pause the video here to give yourself time to read. As you can probably see, sentence C does not make sense. Here are some pairs of sentences that can be linked with a fanboy linking word. Pause the video now to do the activity. Another type of sentence is a complex sentence. A complex sentence has one main sentence, which we call the independent idea, and one or more secondary sentences, which we call dependent ideas. In this example, we have the counsellor was quiet, which is a complete sentence, and because the counsellor was talking, which doesn't make sense on its own because we don't know what because relates to. When we join these sections together though, we get the counsellor was quiet because the client was talking, which makes sense and is known as a complex sentence.
Complex sentences can be formed by putting the independent idea first, as in these examples. Notice that there are lots of different words you can use to join the ideas together, such as because, whenever, or whereas. Also notice that in these examples, with the independent ID first, you don't need a comma. Now take a look at these examples and notice how they are different from the previous examples. In these examples, the dependent idea is now first. In other words, we've flipped the sentence around. The other thing to notice is that now we need to use a comma to separate the two parts of the sentence. As I mentioned, there are lots of different linking words you can use in complex sentences. They can have different purposes too. For example, to make a contrast you could use words like although, while and whereas. To give a reason you could use because, as or since. And to explain time, you could use words like after, because, until, whenever, while. You may also want to show a relationship between two separate sentences. In other words, you may not want to join them together into one sentence, but you want them to flow logically. Words such as similarly and however can be used to connect ideas in two separate sentences. Take a look at the examples on the slide. The third option is a little less common, so if you're not confident using that option, you can stick with the first two. Here's another example with however. Now take a look at these sentences and identify which one is not correct. You can pause the video now to do the activity. Sentence B is not correct because the two sentences should be separated by a full stop or a semicolon, not just a comma. Here are some words to link two separate sentences. You can use words like first, second, finally, furthermore to list ideas. You could use words like similarly, likewise, in addition, to add similar ideas. If you want to make a contrast, you could say things like in contrast, on the other hand, or however, and so on. Let's now take a look at two common sentence errors. Pause the video and see if you can work out what's wrong with each sentence and how it could be fixed. In the first example, it's not grammatically correct to join sentences with commas like this. We call these kind of sentences run-on sentences. To fix them, use linking words or create separate sentences. For example, you could say, the client was quiet, so the counsellor asked questions, and the client then answered. In the second example, the second sentence is a sentence fragment, or an incomplete sentence. Try reading it aloud and you should be able to hear that it doesn't quite sound right. So how can we fix it? You could join the sentences with a comma. Several key factors have been linked to mental health problems, comma, some of which are lifestyle related. Or you could add in a linking word. Several key factors have been linked to mental health problems and some are lifestyle related. Now take a look at this example. Pause the video now if you like. There's not a grammatical problem in this example, however, the short separate sentences make the writing choppy and there are no links between the ideas. This could be fixed by joining the sentences with linking. For example, the client was quiet, so the counsellor asked questions and the client answered. The next three slides feature a short quiz to help you consolidate what you've learnt in this video. Pause when you get to each new slide, try the activity, then press play to hear the answer. The answer for question 1 is B.
The answer for question 2 is C. The answer for question 3 is C. For more resources, check out the Student Learning Support website. These links will also take you to some more great resources. You can contact Student Learning Support for a consultation face-to-face, -face, over the phone or via email. Give us a call or send us an email to make an appointment. We'd love to hear from you.